Party people, Tony Rowe here. Back with rapid game number 70-something. Just finished up eating. It's like monsooning outside, so I figured I would just record something. My girlfriend is uh, at her parents' house for, I don't know, a week or two. She just got ACL, MCL, meniscus surgery, just everything that can go wrong with your knee. Really, okay. Went wrong. And... I'll go D4. I don't know if that's the best move. It is A move. I'm going to go C4 soon. Probably castle C4. He's going C5. Okay. This is getting weird very quickly, isn't it? So if I go C4 now, D takes C4. Queen A4 check. Would have to be sort of my idea, I'm guessing. I don't know what's happening here. <clears throat> I'm going to go castles. Um, I think C takes D4, Knight takes D4. E5 is not super dangerous for me. I think the one thing about black setup is that His king side is a little bit underdeveloped. That could come back to haunt him at some point. I don't know. E5, knight f5 is possible. That doesn't strike me as amazing. E5, queen a4 check is also possible. I might do that. Point being that then he does not get to interpolate with bishop c6 or knight c6. He would have to do something else. Okay, he's not even... He's not going for it. I'm just going to quickly play knight c3. Man. I, uh... <clears throat> uh-huh. Queen a4 check. He's not scared. Queen a4 check, knight c6, only move, knight takes c6, resigns, presumably. I see no trick. I'm going to play it. I hope that you guys notice the camera. This looks better, does it not? This looks sick up here. This is much better than what I had before, hopefully. The only problem is my face is still in it. Other than that, if I was good looking, we'd be freaking set. I ate this burger. There's this place by my house called Gunselman's, and they sell something called the Beast Burger. And you're not gonna buy the Beast Burger? I bought it. Hmm. Can't get a rematch. Dang it. All right, this game was not recording quality. <laughs> I'm going to pause the stream. I'm going to try and get a second game here real quick. Hold on. We're back. Ay, ay, ay. This video is going to be hella long if this game goes long. Please play D4 one goddamn time on my stream. Can I get a Kalashnikov here? Yeah! 
Okay, let's do it. Guaranteed knight c6, 100%. No way this guy goes knight, knight b5. It never happens. It can't be done. I can't get a mainline Kalashnikov on my, on my uh, channel. Look, he's thinking. So he doesn't know. He doesn't know what the move is. Against the e5 Sicilians, hot tip for all of you e4 players out there who also play the open Sicilian. It's always knight b5. Seshnikov, five uh, knight d to b5. Six knight d to b5. <laughs> Same thing. Yeah, I got this burger from Gunselman's, like I was saying. It's called the Beast Burger. It's a uh, Wagyu beef, uh, elk, wild boar, and bison. And those things, to put it mildly, are stampeding in my esophagus and my stomach right now. My body is not happy. It was a horseradish sauce. It was too much. I'm playing with a severe handicap. This is the longest anyone's ever thought uh, about this. The one good thing about like the Sveshnikov and the Kalashnikov is they're very linear in the first couple moves. Like This move, not particularly amazing. This move, this move, this move. All of them aren't good. So pretty much all white players play knight to b5. Then after d6, there's really... Only two main moves, c4, knight, c3, as as composed as compared to like the Nidorf where you play a6 and then white has literally like 15 good moves. It's just like bishop e3, bishop g5, bishop c4, bishop e2, f4, and then there's like a host of other crap that knight b3 immediately, a3. It's like what is every people have tried everything against the Nidorf. And even the Kalashnikov, like knight b5, d6, knight 1 to c3 is the main line, and then always a6, knight a3, and then nowadays everyone's pretty much going bishop e7. And then knight c4, b5, knight e3, uh, knight f6, and then there's only really two moves there. It's like it's very linear. If you like to play linear chess where you just... Like for me, when because I, I study a lot of theory, those that tends to help me, I think, where... Um, it allows me to like narrow down my focus to a couple of main main positions. I have to get myself some insulin for this burger, don't I? Anyone who didn't know I'm a type 1 diabetic, I'm permanently hooked up to this thing. It's a real delight. The, just so you know, this, is, this actually is an insulin pump. It does not play chess. I don't want to be accused of any nonsense here. I'll do it live like this. You can watch me. You can hear the beeping too. <clears throat> Leech has just re uh, released a Swiss system, so if you and your buddies want to play a fun Swiss, you can do that. You can even do USCF online rated tournaments, uh, I've heard, on Leech S. So uh, if you have your TDs license, you can run online tournaments for uh, online rated uh, games, which is pretty sweet. So look into it if that's, that's your thing. This uh, video is sponsored by Diet Barks Root Beer. Uh, I'm a root beer connoisseur. I've 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 drank, drinking, drunk, drunken, I've drunk. I've consumed quite a large number of of root beer brands, and to me, Barks is still the best. Barks has bite. Remember that. These are honestly the worst games ever for streaming. I, I, I don't know what to do here. I just can't. I'm sorry. I, I'm i not so interesting that I can just continue to talk for the full 10 minutes and 43 seconds that this guy has left before he just runs out, straight up runs out of time. I hope for the sake of this video that he's running around his house frantically trying to find, like, you know, Negi's anti-Sicilian book or something just to, you know, destroy me. Did I call that, by the way? Did I call that? God, it's always, it's never night B5 on camera. Unbelievable. It's not a bad move, actually. Knight C6 is a, a little bit underrated. It's just not the best move. Yeah, okay. Where 
Rook B8, maybe? I'm trying to remember if there's some problem with doing this so quickly. There are some move order nu nuances there, but uh, here that I'm not super hip to, unfortunately. H6 is not unreasonable. B8, bishop, b3, I guess, but I think I'm still sort of happy to have that in there. Nah, I don't know. Is there anything that sucks about this? I don't think so. I guess he, I, maybe he can even castle here and just allow this and go here. That would suck. That would make this uh, rook b8 idea look pretty dumb, wouldn't it? Ugh. That's a not 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 a way that I would have chosen to deal with the threat there, but very severely weakens the dark squares. I'm thinking about this move now. My back, my old man back. If you go c3, I just go bishop c5. And then I'm happy that he's played c3, I think. Let's do it. We finally, it's been 70 some rapid games. We finally found someone who takes more time in the early stages of the game than I do. <clears throat> yeah, so c3, knight, uh, bishop c5, castles. I, mm, yeah, I think about h6 there. I'll probably go bishop h4, and then I would probably castle. It's, uh, I recall there being positions for my book where. I'm pretty happy to just go h6, g5 against this. Um, I also recall those positions being ones where I could go knight h5, though, because knight f4 is, like, queen f6, knight f4 is an interesting plan there. So for, for the time being, because his queen is not on a square like d3 or something like that, the knight h5 is impossible. Knight d2, I could be very annoying with this move. Like, let's say rook b1, and then, I don't know, maybe I can go queen a5 and attack this pawn. He might take there. Yeah, I'd be forced to take there. That would be sort of gross. It's not unreasonable to meet knight d2 with d5 now, either. Takes, 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 takes. That would be an interesting position. I don't know if it's good for me. It's could be. The insertion of rook b8 and rook b3 is funny too because in a lot of these positions, 
Uh, white would have d5, e takes d5, c takes d5, bishop b5 check, and then I'd have to go bishop d7, and then he could take here, take here, take here, take here, and it would be maybe unclear, but now he doesn't have this check, so he, he really would legitimately lose a tempo with this bishop if, and have to go to some like more passive square, d3 or e2 in that case. Yeah, I'm not sure. It's funny because I have the X split setup over here, like my recording setup, and sometimes I just go over to this board to analyze for some reason. I don't have a great explanation for why I do that. I don't have a great explanation for why I brought that up either. I just, you know. What's up with Loomba? Oh, Shadow Band, you naughty boy. <laughs> Happy Friday. I really, this should be a Friday. Uh... Friday night silliness video. I should have a fine glass of whiskey right now instead of this stupid barks. You know, the one cool thing to come out of this quarantine is like the quality of online chess tournaments has like completely exploded. There are a tremendous number of really awesome things going on um, online with chess these days. Lee Chess had Anish Giri, uh, Alexander Grishchuk, both like top tier awesome players, streaming titled arenas. Uh, chess.com has the not uh, I am not a GM tournament going on. Um, there's the Russian charity tournament. There's the Magnus Carlsen Invitational. There's so much stuff. Is that what it's called? I don't know. The Chess 24. It's on Chess 24. You know which one I'm talking about. Uh, a lot of really good tournaments going on right now, and they're super uh, fun to watch. The chess commentary has really come a long way. I, I remember when I really started ch taking chess seriously in maybe like the mid-2000s, like 2005, 2006, somewhere around there when I, I first started college. It's like you were lucky if in these tournaments, you were on ICC, they had one board, and uh, it was usually people literally calling in on the phone to do it. No cameras, they didn't have the multi-paned, multi-board thing where it's like board one, board two, board three, all that stuff. Uh, it's just uh, tremendously different. Different world we're living in here. It's great. I love it. Yeah, I'm going to go h6 first. I, I think he's going to go bishop h4, and then I'll probably castle. But I will be looking for... He does take. Okay, so now I have the two bishops also, which is nice. I'm sort of guessing he's going to do this, or... Yeah, I was just about to do this. That's fine. I don't see this as very threatening. probably also going to go a4 here i have to decide whether or not i want to go a5 or a6 probably to keep my bishop on that juicy diagonal i'm not going to let him go a5 bishop c7 i probably will go a5 i'm just wondering what happens after b5 actually it's a minor nuisance isn't it ah, so he's not going to do that Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I will relatively quickly play a5. I think it's probably the move. This looks... Um... Kind of messy. I don't know what, how to evaluate this. I'd probably say black is slightly better. I think I have good practical chances based on the time difference, the rating difference, and the two bishops. The only actual chess factor here involved. I 
I would really like to be able to play takes, takes, bishop d4, I think, just because my bishop would be very stable in that case. But then again, he gets his past a pawn, which could be annoying. b5 is sort of irritating in that I don't know what I would do against it. Because cb, bishop b5 leaves me with like this really backward d pawn that... And precludes me from really going d5 pretty much ever, I'm guessing, which would be annoying. Um, letting him take would lead to pretty much the same pawn structure unless I take with the the c pawn, but that, that, that might be what I do, but I wouldn't be insanely happy about it. I also have to, like, if he goes b5, it's, I, I want to go, like, d6, but I can't because then my queen would not be protecting this pawn anymore, nor would this pawn be protecting this pawn anymore. So I have to, f like, find a, a reasonable waiting move. And, you know, if I if I plan to take with a C pawn, something like bishop b5, bishop b7 is sort of dumb because after bc, dc, then, like, why do I have my bishop here? I really would like to put it, you know, here someday or here. Queen to e2. So takes, takes, bishop d4, threatens rook b4. He'd have to go rook b1. Rook d8 looks interesting. Not so subtly trying to force this, this boy all the way to the finish line. Maybe takes, takes, bishop d4, rook b1, and then the same here. Yeah, no, I should I should probably leave the tension between these two, I think. I am just gonna or do I just go d6? Is is d6 more simple? What's my plan after after d6? I feel like if I'm going d6, I'm also going bishop e6, and I don't really want to do that because I like the two bishops. Ah, there's also bishop b7 now intending to go d5. Bishop b7, b5, d5, b takes c6 as possible. Yeah, I don't like that all that much. So if there, then I would sort of be forced to take. I'm guessing he would take with the a pawn. Okay, I'm going to go rook d8. Shout out to Celine Picture. I don't know who you are, but... Spending your Friday night watching me play a rapid game is... Almost as sad as... More sad, possibly, as spending your Friday night playing a rapid game. You know how you know you're old? You have a lumbar roll. <laughs> in your desk chair. Freaking sad. No, I have a... Uh, actually, you can see him. God. Okay. Uh, no one screen cap that. I have a uh, two kettlebells right there. Then I, Because jujitsu has been um, banned, I've been I've taken up kettlebells as just a way to keep like physically active. And a lot of um, grapplers from different disciplines always say kettlebells are... Um, a good way to supplement jujitsu, but they have also been not very kind on my old man back. I have old old man back injuries that go back to maybe like 2014, and uh, yeah, it's just been a thing where it's just been very difficult to to do it without feeling really sore. But I'm getting there. 
I'm just going to do this without thinking very much. It'll be interesting to see what he decides to do here. He can leave the tension. It, that might even be best with something like bishop d3. Yeah. This is a very odd position. I have no idea what I should be doing here, really. Like, absolutely none. It's actually most tempting me to go rook to e8 now. Um, basically because at some point, it's just the, the, the actual pressure on e5 might be annoying, and I no longer need the rook on this square to guard d5 so much. I'm just wondering rook e8, knight b3, and then takes, takes, what the heck am I doing there with this, this thing coming at me? Ooh, rook a8 perhaps. Is rook a8 a move? Threatening takes and then winning this boy. You pretty much have to go b5 and then what, I'm do what am I doing? Queen H4 is also interesting, threatening the very subtle Bishop G4 winning an exchange. I guess it would not win an exchange to have Knight F3, but then here I think I'd be relatively happy with that. Yeah, maybe maybe this is not so good because of this move. Um, oh, Tony, are you really playing this? You are. You are really playing this. Okay. Well, you know, there's an idea. There's an idea there. Prophylaxis against knight b3. We'll go with it. Doesn't strike me as horrible. I think I would go b5 here if I was him. Yeah. I was thinking about just this, or maybe just this. He could take, 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 knight c4. That looks not bad. Uh, 
Honestly, running this guy out of time might be my, my best formula for winning here. This hasn't been a stellar, stellar game on my part. I play much better um, in um, positions which I would call thematic. Like some people play better when the game is messy and a lot of calculation is involved and a lot of like figuring stuff out uh, live is involved. I play a lot better when the positions look familiar to me and I can apply like chess knowledge that I've, I've built over the course of playing this game for a very long time and studying a lot of thematic kind of positions. This would not be one of those games. I know that's a weakness of mine, but you know, what are you going to do? Guy better play something. I guess I'm pre moving this. Come on, Loomba. What's he doing? What are you doing? Come on, man. All right. Are we analyzing these? Like, is this. Jesus. Okay. Um, well, let's quickly go to the first game, just real quick. Uh, yeah, I mean, geez, is, is there a clear refutation for this move? I doubt it. Bishop g2, bishop g7. I mean, there's a question whether or not... I, I was wondering about this, and I just could not decide if this was the right timing for c4 just because it's so easy for him to take this and then open up this long diagonal before i get to like do anything with it but like i, I looked at this move and then here and then here and i thought i don't know like even is this no bueno oh then 95 yeah all right touche um the point at 95 knight takes e5 queen a4 check i thought Oh, c6 in that case. Ah, you have to you have to play this check instead. So the knight is also hanging. Okay, same, 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 same. Just better. Um, I'm not sure about that. D4 looks natural. C5 castles. I w I was also thinking about this, but I honestly doubt that this is anything. I thought perhaps even just here. I'm guessing this here is very good for white. So. Here, but here. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's nice. I actually saw this tactic, but I did not see that after taking here, for whatever reason, I could just take here. I don't know. Okay. The, I, the idea is this, by the way, if you're not seeing it. That's hot. C4 takes takes this has to be good for white. I think this is a, this is a worse way to capture, I'm guessing. I feel like if if I was playing this position I pr I prefer to go here, but something like this strikes me as at least playable. <clears throat> Taking here I think is much worse. Centralizing this knight for basically nothing and exposing excuse me, exposing the pressure on the long diagonal. I would not play this way if I was black. Um, uh, this game does not have a lot of insight, of course, because Bishop B4 and he's just losing. But I, I do think it, it's it's an interesting... I know Stockfish prefers this move. I, I find that to be a little bit hard to, to stomach. I, I think E6 or D takes C4 are much more natural human moves. A lot of people are... Um, lower rated players are not choosy about how they release the tension in positions. Like... And by tension, I mean any any situation when really both sides are trying to maintain some sort of um, position of their pieces. And the, the classic example is pawn tension, right? Where I have pawns on d4, c4, he has pawns on c5, d5. And both players every turn get to choose how, the, get to choose if and how they get, they, they want to release the tension. And usually in chess, if there truly is tension, that implies that both sides don't want to release it. Because if you wanted to release it, there wouldn't really be that tension. And like, 
I think this is a good example where black releases the tension between these pawns poorly. Like, C takes D4, knight takes D4, I think improves white's position relative to one move ago. Like, now my knight is centralized, now the long diagonal is open, and I don't think he really got that much in return. Whereas, um... Like, you can, you can still see in this position that I, I always maintain the option of going C takes D5. Like, I can play it when it's best for me. And that's the point of um, tension in chess is that you have you have tension and you can almost use it as a plan. Like, I can make the tension so great between the C5, D5 pawns now that black might have to release the tension in an inferior way because of how much pressure I'm building up. And that leads to more advantages in some other way, right? Um, like you can imagine a case where we have this pawn tension and I go like knight c3, bishop g5, whatever. He's forced to go e6. And then when I take it, he might have to go e takes d5 back because of the pressure, even all the way at the end. And then he's left with an isolated pawn. But like if I just do it willy-nilly, like, you know, at, at some other time I let him take with a knight, I don't get anything out of it, then I've, I've incorrectly released the tension. So if you take anything from that, this game, number one, when you're doing this, when you're doing stuff like bishop b4 and players have moved c pawns and stuff, like when I can go queen a4 check, you always have to watch out for that. You want knight c6 in first or you want to be able to um, counter with knight c, you know, meet the check with knight c6 or sometimes uh, it's good enough to have like a knight on d4 so that queen a4 check, king moves, queen takes b4, knight c2 check or whatever. is like, you know, there, there are different ways to deal with that, but yeah, just... Yeah, okay, that's that's enough of this game, really. Let's uh, knock out this other game. I'm sure... Why? What am I doing here? Okay. This game, honestly, not, not super exciting from a theoretical perspective either. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Queen H4 right away. Love it. Okay. I'll chuck that out there into the annotations. I'm into it. Knight F6. If he, if he went Knight C3, it's an interesting decision whether or not I go Bishop B4 or Bishop C5. The Bishop on C5 is pretty good a lot of times. It can go to D4. And actually, because a Bishop on D4 blocks the Queen from the D5 square it has just as much influence on my ability to go d5 as pinning the knight does. But um, going b4, threatening the e, uh, bishop b4, threatening the e pawn, threatening to do the structural damage is also pretty good. h6 right away, bishop h4. E. Aha, uh -huh, because of this, this takes takes and then queen e7 you dirty rascal stockfish actually i think this line is in my book if i had my book handy i would check that but i think i i did uh, i think i do have this line in my book so h6 right away might be a slightly more precise exploitation of bishop g5 right away hmm. so you'd have to go here I don't, I don't know if you guys can tell. Yeah, there was a user script on Reddit. If you're, if you think this looks good where the annotations have uh, colors, like the question mark has a color, the exclam has a color, etc. There was, I don't know, maybe a week or two ago, a, a, a user script on, on uh, r slash chess that, that allows you to do that. And if you guys have never done like user scripts, it's uh, using the stylish plugin for Chrome. You can download the stylish extension that allows you to copy and paste little snippets of like CSS code um, that modify the way like Lee chess is displayed. I used to have one, but I lost it and I cannot find it. I was searching for it all, all like for an hour one day that changed these menus to like a nice uh, blue gradient and changed these buttons to a nice blue gradient, but I freaking lost it and I can't find it now, but. Um, anyway, and uh, if you don't like the default board and uh, piece options, there are also like 37 pages on 
stylish.org of just people who have added more board colors, wood textures, different pieces, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, if, if you're into that, then check it out. Yeah, this is also pretty good, isn't it? Just black has two bishops for nothing. So rook b8, I probably would have gone bishop b3, but actually, yeah, stockfish is just like nah, bro, because presumably this traps your, your rook. So rook b8, kind of stupid, uh, I guess. Not not bad, I, I suppose. It's just a, just a move. Um, but B, B3, I think, especially, is just not, not very good. Yeah, I mean, again, I prefer black slightly. Two bishops, extra center pawn, not very much compensation for white in any other way. Thought maybe a4 here and then a5 b5 was interesting and then takes i think i was planning on taking with the c pawn yeah i just think the c pawn is the best recapture but this is uh this feels tough to make progress it's always hard to play to play chess positions for me anyway where i don't have a pawn break like and it um there's a chapter i know i've talked about this before there's a chapter in alex smith's book i believe his name is axel smith alex smith you idiot Axel Smith's book, Pump Up Your Rating, um, about, I think it's about Evgeny Agrest um, and a saying that he had that just says, no pawn break, no plan. Or I don't know if it's his say saying or they just used his games as a model because it's something that Evgeny Agrest does to a lot of his opponents. But yeah, not having a pawn break makes chess actually very hard because if you think about most plans, they're based around pawns in a lot of ways either the weak squares created by pawns or targeting weak pawns or pawn breaks based on pawn structure even preventing your opponent's pawn breaks based on your and their pawn structure so without pawn structure sometimes it's very hard to for me to actually play anyway it's not it's not easy castles castles a5 rook d8 okay so I'm happy I played rook d8. It's interesting to at least think about this position. Um, again, I, w I probably would have to go rook d8. It's just this, to me, was a little bit like, ah, do I want to do this? And b5, d5, bishop d3, yeah. And, uh, yeah, this feels very equal. I mean, I think I would have a really hard time actually winning a position like this. I, I mean, if, if black is better, it's extremely marginal. I would say this is more kind of unclear. Did it flash rook eight for a second? Did you guys see that? Did that, did that happen? Did it flash rook eight for a second? I actually thought about queen f4, but I, I also was like, what does this do? So I don't know why, like sometimes moves pop into your head. You're like, should I play this? But what does it do? D4, huh? I, I Again, this is a move that I rejected positionally almost immediately just due to like this. Just, or, or takes, takes, and then, you know, oh... Okay, so takes here first, takes here, takes here. Then rook b2. Okay, I, I was not even remotely uh, on this wavelength here with this uh, idea. That's that's next level. This is the kind of crap that like computers find that, that is very hard for me to find. I, I'm more of like a slowly increase your sort of position kind of guy. So rook a8, not... not not the best move. D4 was crazy. Okay. Get the hell out of here with that. Then B5, Bishop B7. The guy just let like 30 seconds of his time drain out. I'm sorry these games weren't amazing. I, I'm hesitant to even post these. It's like, do you just want to listen to me ramble on about this for, for I don't know, how long have I been going? I can't tell. I hate that about XSplit. Like, why is time not a factor that it shows you? Am I dumb? Anyway. Um... Geez, uh, I am still looking for someone to do some graphic design. I would like to clean this up. Like I just want like a board 
and notation really to show up and then maybe have like some graph like a graphics around like some kind of a border and maybe it says like tony Rowe somewhere or maybe like a cool ass logo that someone designs for me but uh i just want to clean up my stream a little bit if anyone knows a graphic designer hit me up uh i would i again i want to pay you to do chess graphic design which is something that someone who's watching my videos and is a graphic designer must be excited about then again only like a couple hundred views i only get a couple hundred views and almost no one makes it this far into my videos by analytics, so if like four people are seeing this, um, you know, I'm sorry for wasting your time. Uh, anywho, have a good weekend. I have a, kind of a silly opening video coming, maybe next video. Uh, I'm just cleaning up the analysis now, so and then I'll have to record it, but that one should be out relatively soon. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. If I don't uh, get back to you, peace.